Uh, you heard me mention the verses for our consideration today. We're going to look back there again. John chapter 6. I'm going to just read two verses that are our focus. In that sixth chapter, verses 14 and 15. So, uh, John 6, 14 and 15. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, say, this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. For a few minutes I'm going to talk from the subject, driven to destiny, driven to destiny. Yeah, driven to destiny. I'm realizing our destiny demands that we stay on purpose, demands that we stay on course. <coughs> you heard Brother Nixon uh, talking about us focusing in John, and we like that. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave Oftentimes we're so busy thanking God for His giving, we just kind of forget that we shove to the side the fact that God expects us to give as well. Mm -hmm. That God loves and His love made Him give. But that same love should motivate us to give also. Yeah. And so we want to focus on our responsibilities as we focus on these times when we are battling this, this issue of racism in America. And uh, it's good to point the finger and to delegate the other folk, but my question today is, what is it that God expects of you? Hmm. Make it more personal. Just repeat that. What is it, what is it? that God expects, expects of me? Of me. What is it that God wants me to do in order to minister in this area of racism? Amen? Amen. Amen. I was reading this book by T. Jakes entitled Destiny. And um, look at a, a chapter. He had this matter of people who stay at a party too long. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to start right there. I'm going to start there. I'm talking about fresh flowing faith. Fresh flowing faith. That if I'm going to realize the destiny that God has set forth for me, I must have a fresh flowing faith. And sometimes we get, we get stagnant faith. You still talk about our faith, but you still talk about you got faith in what you claim you had faith in 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. What what faith, what new faith do you have? What is it that is occurring when Jesus came out of the bottom of that boat? The first question he asked him, where is your faith? Mm -hmm. That it don't take faith to talk about that which you can see. Huh. Faith is something that you can't see. Yes. Faith is something that is demanded of us as we walk a fresh walk. But James is talking about this matter of, uh, you ever had a party at your house and you had that one guest that stayed a little too long? <laughs> All the other guests gone home and put the food up. You know, you're trying to drop the hint, you know, that you get sleepy, you get tired. But seemingly they don't get the hint. And they just keep on talking. <laughs> you, you're, trying, you're trying not to be rude. And that'll hang the one, hang the one. See, first of all, it's a miracle not to a party. I ain't got no problem telling you to go home <laughs> when the party is over. But, but some folks don't know how to leave. And uh, he was saying how when they refuse to leave, he said, that's probably the person you don't invite the next time. Mm. From, that, from that perspective, I was looking at spiritually, that may be the problem with some of us, that we, uh, we kind of get stuck in the rut and we don't want to leave the park. 
Yeah, yeah. I wish I had the witness here. We, I talked about every Sunday morning ought to be a celebration. Every time we come to church, we're going to celebrate God and celebrate Jesus, His Son, and celebrate the Holy Spirit. But God doesn't intend for us just to celebrate. The celebration should motivate us to actions. Who I have the witness here? Well, the passage we're looking at is the time when Jesus had feed and fed the 5,000. You remember the two fish and the five biscuits. And he broke them up and fed 5,000 folk. And you heard the text says, when he finished, he told the disciples, pick up the crumbs. And when they picked up the scraps, they had 12 baskets full. That's the sermon right there. They talk about when they went on that boat, the other side, he had, had 12 baskets in the boat. Uh, that's a sermon right there. Twelve baskets, that's a sermon right there. I ain't that. That's another sermon. Mm -hmm. So he said, he said, the Bible says, uh, Jesus perceived that they wanted to make him a king. And they had planned to make him a king. The King James said by force. But basically it meant that they wanted to initiate the uh, necessary steps to declared him king because they thought him to be this prophet that Moses had promised. Uh, but the question is, why did they want him to be king? They wanted to make him king. Uh, he, he, he exemplified the ability to perform miracles that would serve as a good uh, resume for the king that they had in mind. They wanted a king, but the king they wanted, they wanted a king for the wrong reasons, which I had to witness here. They wanted a king because they liked the idea of this man giving them some free food. They act like I ain't gonna talk today. I'm gonna be here for a while. I want you to pack y'all lunch. I ain't saying man, we gonna be here for a while. Let me take your coat off. That, 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 that when you when you look at the fact that they lack the idea of a man giving them free food and free medical attention, this is somebody they want to make a king. I can get a free meal. I can get some free medical attention. You always hear them for We lack this. We want to make him our king. In fact, they want to make him king because of what they felt like Jesus could do for them. I wish I had a witness here. And if he could do all of this, this is the kind of man we want to sit on top and make him our king. Uh, my question is today, uh, is, that, is that really a whole lot of difference between them and us? Huh. That, that you know, a lot of folks come to church but a lot of times when they come to church, they are more concerned with what the Lord's going to do for them than what they're going to do for the Lord. This is what they go, oh, we, oh, the Lord has blessed me. He gives me this. And look at our prayer. Oh, you know, God, go here, do this, do that. It's always about the Lord. What is it you, would, uh, you want to give me? What is it you going to do for me? What is it you have done for me? We want to praise God for his blessings. But how often do we ask God to give us some direction on his will for our life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, 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 they were excited. They wanted a king because they wanted somebody who could feed them with, with a lunch and feed them just stretch the food out. And some of y'all know about stretching food out. And there's nothing wrong with knowing that God can stretch the menu. But the thing is, is that if you weren't careful, you will get to a point where you are so busy looking at what God can do for you, you forget about your responsibility for God. Yeah. I hear people talk all the time now, they say, well, we've had the protest, and now we got to get to stop protesting and start asking what's the next step. And I say, well, maybe that's the wrong question. Number one is, don't forget the protest because you still might have to do some of that. Yeah. You, put, you hit the power button, but that's the problem. You, you always want to throw one thing away before you get to the other. It might not be an either or, it might be a 
both aim. Hmm. Number two, I need to ask myself, what is it? See, we want to tell the president to do something, we want the governor to do something, we want the, 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 the county judge to do something. My question is, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and if we want to uh, affect change, if we want to get rid of racism in this country, what is my contribution? Uh, somebody says, I listen to several of them say, we, we don't need people to, I'm not a racist. Uh, but that, that racist ain't the problem. We need some uh, anti-racist. You know, I know, you know, if you want La La Lane, you're in dream world, you're not a racist, well, okay. But you make yourself an agent of an anti-racist. What are you talking about, Hayden? See, see, you're not, not a racist. You still don't have to do anything. But when I'm against racism, when I'm anti-racism, that means that I have to attack racism whenever it brings up its head. Yeah. Wish I had a really good Yeah, yeah. That means I need to do something. I see a problem. I need to say something. I see something wrong. I need to do something about it. I need to be against racism no matter when it pops up its head, no matter who is trying to uh, demonstrate racism. I need to say something. Mm -hmm. I listened to a commentator interview y'all, Vice President. Pence, and he was uh, trying to get Pence to say that black lives matter. Hmm. And that man just totally refused to say the words black lives matter. And it hurts me when y'all want to use God to cover up your, your flaws. You know, I'm Christian. Christian, we Christian. We Christians. I say, don't, don't put me in that. I ain't a part of that. We Christians know that all lives matter, okay? There's a matter of, yeah, I understand all lives matter, but, but uh, can I get you just to say black lives, you know that scamp refused to say the words, black lives matter. It's like, it's like uh, the old mentality that white folks want to tell you how to act and what to say and what to do, and they want you to do it their way. And I told you before, they like to use these diversionary tactics, so when, when Kaepernick takes a bow, when you do one thing, they want to talk about another thing. You talk about the racist symbol of the Confederate flag. They want to talk about the history of the great soldiers. But it's, a, it's amazing to me, Brother Clinton, they always want to talk about the great Confederate soldiers who fought against America, by the way. But they don't want to talk about the black soldiers who fought in World War I and World War II. The black soldiers who gave their life. The black soldiers who fought in Vietnam and came back here was treated like dogs. And right they're always begging you to give money for veterans, but they don't uh, allocate, but they should allocate from the from the budget, from the American budget for the soldiers. See, I got a problem with you taking a boy who's 18 years old and send him, put his life on the line, but not going to take care of it when he comes back home. Yeah. Wish I had a witness here. Mm -hmm. And if you want to pay for him to go, you ought to pay for to take care of it when he's gone. Then. Your blessed assurance. 
Yeah. Yeah. And get busy. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. If God spoke with you. God gave you some direction, some directive to what you should be doing with your life. Look at this. Look at this. I said you ought to have a flat, a fresh, flowing face. See, we so busy to celebrate the same old way, singing the same song, clapping the same way, jumping the same jump, shouting the same way that we forget the the, the spirit is a new thing. God uh, is not old and and, and stagnant. God has a fresh faith. God yeah. has a fresh movement. That, that I don't need to worry about coming here and being bored. If you bored. If you bored, you're not connected. If you bored, you're dealing with the wrong God. Because yeah, yeah, God yeah, said, yeah. you don't have time to get bored. Yeah, 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 it's hard yeah. to get bored when electricity is going through your body. You don't have to get bored when the Holy Ghost is taking over your life. You can't get bored and God is challenging you to your next step. If you yeah, bored, yeah. you're not listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not paying attention that day. would have me to do. Yeah, yeah. Not only do I see this fresh flowing faith, but I also see a fixed focus. Yeah. Fixed focus. In that same chapter, James talks about blindness. You know how in a country they used to put the blinders on the horses when they were plowing. But he mentioned the blinders of blinkers that they put on when they're racing. The horses are so close together that they put those blinders on so the horse is more focused on what he should do mm -hmm. instead of focusing on what the horse next to it is doing. Yeah. Say it, say it, <laughs> say it, say it. See, if you're not careful, you'll get focusing on your, your compadre on this side or that side, and you won't do what you need to do. Say it. Well, I wish I had a <laughs> One thing they teach you when you're a racer, a professional runner, they tell you don't waste time looking back. Yes. Because see, when you're looking back, you're slowing yourself down. Yes. That's why they like that boy, Boat. Boat was an unusual talent. Boat would look back, sometimes turn around and walk the leg for a run. Because he was so gifted, he could get so so big a gap, he could climb when he got to the end. I wish I had a witness here. But, but if you're in a tight race, you ain't got time to look back. Yeah. When you're in a tight race, you don't have time to look over. When you're in a tight race, you've got to stay focused on what's ahead. Yeah, Do I have a witness here? Yes. In order to reach your destiny, you need, you need to have a fixed focus. You need to understand that distractions will destroy your destiny. Yes. Distractions will destroy your destiny. Now, peripheral vision is necessary. Don't get me wrong. That, that sometimes you got to look back in history to find out the mistakes that were made in the past so you don't duplicate them. Yeah, yeah. You gotta have a peripheral vision to be able to see sometimes if you're not careful, you'll get blindsided. Yeah. See, when you're driving, you gotta be able to see all around you. But, yeah. but at the same time, there's a point in your journey where you need to stay focused on what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a witness here? Yeah. Oh, you see it right in the text. We, we, we always want to duplicate Jesus, but you see, sometimes we duplicate Jesus at the wrong time, uh, which I had a witness here. The Bible said that Jesus left them because they were about to make it a king. Which I, woo, woo, this is rich, this is rich. You see, you see, you see, brother, 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 brother if, if I duplicate Jesus after he finished his work, and I'm so, supposed to be still doing my work. Hmm. I'm, just hmm. Hmm. I'm duplicating the wrong Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. They want to make him the king. Question, how can you make Jesus a king hmm. when he's already poor with that? <laughs> when he's already a king. Yeah. But see, there's a difference in making him a king when he had just got through feeding them and his being the king of kings after he finished the job. Y'all yes. didn't get it, y'all didn't get it, y'all didn't get it. Look here, look here, look here. They wanted to make him a king because he just said it. But really what they're trying to do, trying to make him an earthly king so he didn't 